Don Tatushka. I was a uh, E5 when I got out, a second class IC man. I was an IC man. I worked in the, in the telephone uh, exchange basically on a ship, which was pretty much the same thing most cities had at the time. And we had approximately 5,000 telephones on that ship, that, uh, and I ended up being responsible for them. Uh, I was the uh, petty officer in charge of the uh, forward IC room when I when I finally did get out. But uh, life aboard ship was was uh, comfortable, you know. It, it was a long time ago, and you you don't seem to remember the bad times as much as you do the good times. And and we we did have a lot of good times on there, and a lot of them were not supposed to have happened. But uh, we actually had uh, during my term, I I believe Captain Inge, uh we had three of them and while I was on there, and uh, Captain Rumble was, was the uh, commander when I left. And uh, I think uh, Commander uh, Captain Hayward, who's our guest speaker uh, tonight, he's here now. He was the next, uh, yeah, I believe he got on a month after I got off, he took over the ship. But uh, he had very little contact with with commanding officers, you know, that was just, uh, you know, like a politician now. You, you've seen them occasionally in the passageways, but uh, I really don't have the, uh, you know, much to say about the commanding officers. Uh, I, I do have one particular uh, gentleman, our, our chief warrant officer, Max Leach, who just recently, the last couple of years passed away. and. Uh, he was the ultimate sailor, and uh, everybody looked up to him. He wasn't a big guy; he was just the authority figure for our our division. And uh, turned out in our uh, reunion in Virginia Beach in 2006, he showed up, and all of the guys from our division that were there, he he gave every one of them a small statue with a the lone sailor with a sea bag. And uh, I hadn't seen the man for 30 years, and uh, he, he came around and gave every one of us one of them statues. And, uh, one of the people that you'll never forget. And, uh, he's probably the only one on that ship, officer-wise, that I, I recall. A couple of them, you know, I remember, but uh, it was mostly a, an enlisted group, you know, that some people, I guess, remember stuff like that. I just remember what I want to remember. Uh, they had a hobby shop on there. You could do paintings and models and, and whatnot, but uh, nothing like what they had today. We had no exercise equipment or anything like that. And Food was, was more than adequate, and uh, of course nobody wanted to stand in a chow line. So uh, You did that every day, three times a day at least. Uh, you stood in, in lines. And, one of my duties on there when we were in Vietnam was uh, showing movies all over the ship. I got paid an extra dollar for every movie I showed. And I showed one a night for I don't know how many months over there and uh, carry them movies all over. Not like what they've got now. I mean, we, we had 35 millimeter reels and they were very heavy and uh, you showed them in the officer's wardroom. You, you had to put your dress uniform on and you showed them to the captain or the admiral. You had to do that. And, carried a projector and uh, it was a chore but hey I got another dollar from it. I showed him in the uh, in the movie booth which hung out over our uh, our hangar bay and uh, I must have had a rough night that because I fell asleep during the movie and we have two projectors going and uh, you're supposed to transfer them over when you see the cue marks and having dozed off this thing was just flapping and chattering and uh, I heard somebody banging on the door and uh, people were throwing their shoes up at the movie booth and uh, <laughs> that was fun. We got it straightened out and got them, got them back you know, in order, but uh, yeah, it seems like strange duty, but showing movies was, was interesting and uh, it was a lot more interesting than fixing telephone equipment and that. And, uh, Almost got shot by the Marines one night because I didn't notify all the people I had to when I worked in a security spot. I had a security clearance for, for that and was supposed to notify the Marine detachment and uh, the officer that was going to do it. And I relied on an officer I probably shouldn't have. And he never notified them and I got my back to the, uh, to the ladder and I heard this ruckus and I turned around here's the whole Marine detachment in their underwear with rifles pointed at me. And <laughs> 
That was kind of tense for a few minutes. <laughs> well, we got that straightened out. No, it was, it was a lot of good times on the ship. A lot of good friends. I'm still in contact with, with quite a few of the guys that I served with, and uh, even today we have a contingent here that, that we were all on board together. And One guy in particular probably shouldn't be here because he had no right to be alive, and I told him that. We used to drink cleaning fluid on the ship. 190 proof pure grain alcohol it came in a can, you know, it was contact cleaner was what it was, but it, it worked. And back in the 60s, uh, you could get these fizzy tablets, they call them. They changed the color of the water and supposedly the flavor or whatnot. And we would have those mailed from home, and you'd throw them into a, a glass with some water and a shot of 190, and you had a cocktail. You know, poor Jerry, he drank a half a pint of that stuff and fell out of his bunk and split his skull open, triple fracture of his skull, and then laid in his bunk for three days in his own mess. And uh, <laughs> we finally called the Corbin and they, they flew him to Germany and they said, no, he's not going to make it. He had a triple fracture. And a month later he was back and he's down here at our meetings yet. So, yeah, a lot of things happened.